What's up, Airheads? We're back here in the virtual Airstream studios for another stirring rendition of Putting On Airs. I'm T, and that's Corey. How you doing there, Corey? Oh, I am doing fine, T. Uh, I like your get up that you got on. That's a terrible mm. Scottish accent, but I do like your, your dress. Whatever yeah, is, this it is. A, is this a blouse? Is that what this is? Yeah. Or a, a shawl or something? It yeah, opens the, up. It, it the has term, buttons on it. it you know, doesn't it the button term, or zip? It just sort of flaps here. Yeah, the term blouse is sort of always been confusing to me because it seemed like I thought I knew what a blouse was. Like my granny would be like, I'll get my blouse. And I was like, okay, a blouse is sort of a light, uh, sort of uh, silky fabricy top that the woman wears. And then I would hear other women say my blouse and it would just be like what I would de deem as a regular shirt. So I was like, does blouse just mean shirt in woman? You know, so I don't know. I don't think so. I actually think that, and I heard this on another podcast recently, but I can't remember who it was. Uh, there was like a guy talking about he had a shirt which bloused out too much mm. or, or something like that. And okay. the host, the host was like, "What bloused? That's not a, that's not like a ver. It just means like a woman shirt, right?" And he was like, "No, it's. Uh, I'm pretty sure it meant. And I feel like they said it meant like uh, it's." Like loose, if it's yeah. like, uh, you know, if it looks puffy it's like a throw over, it's yeah. loose, then uh, that is the blousing part, I guess. Uh, well, so. Charlie Murphy in the famous uh, Dave Chappelle sketch referred to Prince and uh -huh. his entourage as the blouses, and they all right. wear those puffy pirate shirts. So there you go. Right. It's a woman's loose upper garment resembling a shirt. Loose. Uh, and but it is also a verb. It's in to make a garment hang in loose folds. I.e., I bloused my trousers out over my boots. <laughs> That's so, I bloused my trousers. Sounds like you made a mistake. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I don't. I never heard anybody say that before. But uh, all right. I guess we got to the bottom of blouse and blousing. I still don't know if this is a blouse. It's pretty loose. It's a blouse. So, anyway, it doesn't matter. Okay. Um, so today, a little later, I'm going to be talking about uh, another one of your suggestions where the Venn diagram overlaps between fancy and trash people, and that's uh, being on reality television. Yes. Uh, they seem to be the two, the two biggest uh, stars in that arena. It seems to exist mostly on those two ends of the spectrum. We'll talk with very little in the middle. We'll talk more you, about that later. And then you're do doing you want me to guess a, who the two stars are right now? No, I just, meant, I, did, no I just meant that like, Rich people and oh, trash yeah. people yeah. are the two main types of like reality yeah, TV. It's, it's either one Honey or Boo the Boo other. to Kim Kardashian. Yeah, right. And and then like and sometimes they overlap a lot. Perfect sort of Venn diagram topic because oftentimes it's both at the same yep. time. Uh, but I just meant like if you think about reality TV, it's sort of like outside of like you know, we're not, not including like competition, cooking shows and yeah. singing shows and shit like that. But the sort of like docu follow version where it's like people living their lives. It seems like it's almost exclusively yeah. one or the other. It's on yeah. one end of the spectrum or the other. But anyway, more on that later than history. Professor Cho on uh, what? The defenestrations of Prague, which mm -hmm. until recently I learned was not just a play that the Patriots ran, which is what I thought it mm -hmm. was. Uh, then I was like, oh, wait, no, that's the annexation of Puerto Rico. Puerto Rico. So the defenestrations of Prague. That's the little giants ran. Yeah, that's right. The little giant. Yeah, you're right. The, you're right. I'm so stupid. Yes. And, and by the way, the annexation of Puerto Rico was just like a bunch of laterals. Like, yeah. You remember, it was like it was like their big secret weapon play in the little giants. But it's just what every desperate team does at the <laughs> end of every game. Just yeah, right. Bro, it's just not something you plan for. <laughs> no, it's something you're forced to do, and, and it, it never works. Never works. Yeah, right. When it, yeah, when it does, it's the greatest thing that anyone's ever seen. But we're t what would you say like point nine percent of times that's worked, or pro maybe less? Oh yeah, that yeah, that or less for sure. Yeah. Very very rarely. I mean, when it does, it's like huge news and a literal miracle. They call it. Yeah, right. The Miami miracle when the Patriots against the Dolphins when Gronkowski was put in it safety for some reason and he took yeah. the wrong angle and they scored and won on on one of those plays but anyway uh defenestrations of Prague defenestration like meaning thrown out windows 
yes, I was going to get to that later, but that's I'm I glad that you brought word. it. I'm glad you brought I it up. Word. I'll say it all the time. Like if you're talking about like Russia or whatever, like if there's a journalist in Russia that comes up on skews or something, yeah. I'll say something like, "If somebody's better watcher, he's going to end up defenestrated." Like Vladimir Putin is a defenestrating ass son of a bitch, you know that yeah. type of thing. Because he and he I stayed, he stayed defenestrating. He people. he does, and uh, I've heard you say that, and I know yeah. that he be throwing people out of windows, but I didn't. Yeah. Include, I thought <laughs> I still thought that defenestrating was somehow more complex than simply throwing a motherfucker out a window. Like Which that's wild a very, that there's a word it's for so ju- European. It's, it's like it's, it's not so European. It's not just throwing my fucker off a bridge or off the top of a building nope. or from a moving car. There's all kinds of ways in which you can mm-hmm. be through throw it. a motherfucker, be throat, yeah, be be hurled by someone else. It's specifically out window. a window to yeah. throw a motherfucker out a goddamn window. Nowadays we'd straight. say yeet. I Yeet. suppose, yes, but yes. like that's it's funny to me because like it just seems so European for them to be like Vika not just simply says so he throws him out the window. He right. must be defenestrated, you know. What's what well, defenestrate definitely doesn't sound at all German, but you know German is known for, and I'm gonna say this and not have many good examples to call to mind, but German <laughs> is known for. Uh, Mm-hmm. They've got like a lot of words Worst for a lot trip. of like specific Schadenfreude. Things or, like Schadenfreude is one that yeah, everybody knows, but they've got a bunch of those though. Apparently, uh, that we, just don't, we just don't have. You know, where it's like words that one word that illustrates, you know, a somewhat complex idea. You know, like a whole thing. Yeah. Like I said, like throwing someone specifically out a window. It's just yeah. wild that there's a word for that, but there is. But again, you know I don't what Schizer means. Anymore. It's poop, ain't it? To get shit on, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, hits for them. Shice poop and shicer is to be pooped on or what? You actually know all this? Yeah, well, if some of the films my buddies made me watch by sending me a link I would have otherwise not clicked on are to be true, Mm -hmm. it, it means to be pooped on or loving being pooped on or to poop on. Well, speaking of poop, uh, listen, I got that's actually before we get into the topics, there was something I wanted to tell you about that I saw this week on the internet and thought it was lovely. But first, uh, Thompson, my best friend, uh, if you're part of the, if you're a longtime member of the Extended Skew Universe, you definitely know about Thompson. He uh, texted me yesterday saying that he really, really enjoyed the uh, Garden Hobo uh, <laughs> segment. From my best week. friend Robbie, I re- recapped yeah. it for him, and he's like, "God damn it, I got to listen to this show." He's like, "Are you yeah. shitting me right now?" Yeah, Thompson said he just loved that, couldn't stop laughing at the prospect of how utterly absurd and ridiculous <laughs> yeah. that is, or whatever. And I was like, "Yeah, pass, be that way." And he's like, "Yeah, pass, do be that way." And I told him, I was like, "I got another uh, laughably absurd thing from the past for you this week. Uh, no spoilers though, so you, he'll have to listen to the show to hear it. Well, I'm gonna do it right now. So, first, I want to start by." Uh, there's a link in our doc or you can pull it up so you can look at it. Uh, and then we'll big BPP. will put the picture in here at, at, so people watching can see, uh, it's, <laughs> are you looking at toilets? Are yeah. you at toilets yeah. in a medieval castle? Yeah. So <laughs> I, I didn't know this and I don't think they're all like that, but apparently in a lot of castles, if you're only listening or whatever, it's like, you got the castle wall, right? And then jutting out from the wall <laughs> is a hole, and that hole is where they would poop in. That's where the toilet the <laughs> toilet was built to jut outwards past the wall, and it's just a <laughs> hole straight down. So they just poop down the wall, right? Um, <laughs> it's so funny looking in the cartoon. Uh, yeah, onto the ground. And it's like, I guess you know what else were they going to do well actually we'll see a couple other options that they had at the time but anyway i thought it's kind of wild like god the past was so nasty it's like all the castles had poop on the walls you know what i mean all the time and bowls poop bowl poop in bowls yeah like that was you know like the bedside uh bedside bowl or whatever the the latrine or not latrine that just means bathroom but the the fuck are those things called bedpan bedpan yeah. yeah they like in several of my stories that i watch like you know pole dark and a lot of those things the rich ladies would just have a porcelain bowl that they would shit in and then 
their chambermaid would come and empty it out. And I always looked at that and thought, I was like, I mean, yes, I know you're rich. And it's like, oh, I have people handle my poop. But like, I'd be so embarrassed. Like, I would have to deal with that myself because I wouldn't eat. No matter how much, how little I thought of these people, I don't want them seeing my poop. So you've gotten uh, ahead of the game here because that is like the central recurring theme of this whole little segment that I wanted to talk to you about because the idea of that comes up a lot, i.e. privacy or the lack thereof, the lack of any privy privacy right. for back then. Because you see how this is how the lords would poop in their castle, right? they just poop straight <laughs> down the walls. Well, apparently in some places, peasants would like gather outside the castle <laughs> To watch the prince poop, to see like if he was doing okay or whatever, or really? also like, because there wasn't a hanging that day, like they hadn't arrested any, <laughs> they hadn't arrested any pigs lately or whatever. And it's Nobody's like, getting the finish straight. What was so. they for entertainment? You know, so let's go yeah. watch the prince poop, and they and that's what they would do. You see the defenestration of constipation. What you choose today, love. And it's like, you know, if they sit there and it's like, he's not pooping. What's wrong? <laughs> What's wrong, me, Lord? Why are you not pooping? You know, like you're screaming <laughs> up through the hall while he's sitting there trying to poop. And then like, if he would poop good, they'd yeah. cheer. Be like six more weeks of, of winter. Six more, yeah, exactly. A sign <laughs> of good fortune if the prince is having healthy bowel movements you, or whatever. And it's like the past never ceases to do, amaze me. Uh, do you think there were two dudes like us who were betting on whether or not he would shit? Like, you know, yeah, we got probably. a couple shillings on it. It's like, I've got yeah. a pants on him not pooping. Right, yeah. I'm out of pants, but i got this chicken's foot with that cover me. <laughs> <laughs> I've got an old cabbage. <laughs> I was like, throw in half a boot. Right. I was going to make dirt Getting cabbage soup now. later, but yeah. I'd like to parlay it into yeah. maybe a turnip. I was about to say, yeah, I was like, <laughs> if anyone got a turnip, we can really have some action. <laughs> <laughs> it's ridiculous, but you know, had clip that out that hit for me. I had to get your kicks where you could before you coughed to death in the mud <laughs> at forty. But uh, so they would come and watch the prince poop and all that, and I was thinking that was like I was, you know, I'm I want privacy. Oh God, yeah, like it's sent it's key to me. I, it's very. I still to this day have difficulty in like a public restroom in, a, yes. in an airport or something. It's like, obviously, you know, sometimes you got to go, you got to go. But like, I greatly prefer quiet, private home, whatever. So I was thinking this would be rough. The, the rabble, the rabble gathering outside, screaming up at you while you're po cheering dude, when you poop. Dude, I, but it goes beyond that. It's not just that. It's this also led me to finding out about a position in medieval Europe, oh known the as janitor. the groom of the stool. All right. Uh, which part, did you say poop janitor? Because actually, I meant to say there would be a peasant <laughs> whose like job was <laughs> to bring a cart. Everybody, you know, <laughs> poop cart coming through, and then they like seen shovel that? the shovel the poop onto the cart and take it. You know, to Main Street, probably. Have you, have you seen that that Daniel the Rad Creek where they wash their clothes and shit and put the poop in? <laughs> I can't remember what the name of the show is, but Daniel Radcliffe did this. Uh, it was a, a anthology type show where every season it was the same cast, but they played different characters. The no, first one was I never the first heard of one. That. It's Sounds fucking cool. awesome. Uh, one of them's like they're on the Oregon Trail, and I can't remember the other one, which was which was actually my favorite, but I can't remember it. And in one of the seasons, he was like a prince or whatever, and Steve Buscemi's in it, and his job is to go around collecting piles of shit, yeah. and he's trying to get he's trying to start a like poop and sons business, like he's trying to keep get his family into it, but they're like, uh -huh. Dad, I don't want to shovel poop. He's like, no. I've been shoveling poop. Your yeah, granddaddy right. shoveled yeah, right. poop. His dad, his dad before him shovel yeah. poop and back on my sons are going to shovel poop. It's like, yeah. And back then their name, their last names were whatever they did. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's like, you're Stephen Poop Shoveler. Like, <laughs> yeah. what, you expect to be an apothecary. Oh, <laughs> no. Oh, God. Yeah. You're not Stephen Stable Boy. You shovel <laughs> poop. That's what you're we Stephen do. Stephen Poop Shoveler. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, well, that was a real thing, uh, <laughs> yeah. but also, but inside the castle, they had a position called groom of the stool, right, which was 
a male servant in the house of the monarch who was responsible for assisting the king in his toileting needs. Mm -hmm. All right. So he had to have a towel, some water, some wash up or whatever. It's apparently a matter of some debate as to whether or not his duties included wiping the royal ass. Yeah. (laughs) Uh, But dude, I bet it did. Probably. Of course it did. it did. Yeah, Dude, right. if like, they're already in there and I already right. think this little of you, like, to me, my only need, and you're the same, my only need in the bathroom is privacy. The rest of that shit, I can handle it. I'm good. Get the fuck out of here. Like, and it's not just random people. Like, you know, when you get married, uh, it's, and it's the women I found when I talk to dudes, the women get real comfortable with leaving the bathroom door open. Now that we have a kid, I understand that that's going to be a thing. Yeah. I get that. But like Amber, I'll be in the bathroom taking a shit and she'll knock on the door and she's like, hey, what are you doing? I go, I'm taking a shit. And she knows how much it don't hit for me, but she'll just like walk in to get something. I'm like, get the fuck out of here. I'll, and then now I'm grabbing the thing and throwing it through the crease of the door. I'm like, just get. She's like, baby, I don't care if you poop. I'm like, this ain't about you. None of right. this is about you. It's about me. Get the fuck out. Right. Well, imagine having a manservant standing right beside you the whole time, every time. Right. But here's the part you might not expect. Uh, (laughs) This was not like, okay, let me put it to you like this. What like status or class of person do you think held this position in the castle? Well, I mean, okay. If you hadn't put it to me that way, I would have probably said, you know, a pauper, someone that yeah. was going to be in debtor's prison, and they were like, you can work it out and shit, right. you know. But since you put it to me that way, I'm going to suggest that it was, well, did they have a fucking middle class back then? I guess somebody owned the ladders. I don't know, but. Yeah. I think I, merchants and stuff merchants were, like, were maybe kind of middle class. They, they were could, like. They'd have a lot of money. Some of them yeah, would, but they had The no, businessmen. They weren't aristocrats yeah, or whatever. They were so they weren't, yeah, right. And I think they were that's like about our boy, all you had. They were like our boy that uh, married Liz Taylor. It's like he don't have class, but he gets to hang out near him because he's got money and shit. So right. I don't know. I, because you said it like this, I'm going to say the sons of lords who are trying to curry favor with the royals. This was a hotly contested position that was generally filled by a very substantial figure from the nobility. Uh, there were people that, like, some some of the grooms of the stool were, like, wealthy landowning, uh, you know, dukes, or no, maybe not duke, whatever, some kind of nobility who had, like, four manor houses and stuff. It was not uh, a pauper's job at all. It was one of the most sought-after jobs in the but, whole monarchy, do you know do, why, or can you assume why, or guess why? I, I, I will guess why, uh, but first let me say this. I've always assumed that the reason that you would want to have four estates and have a lot of wealth would be so that you didn't have to deal with any poop but your own for the rest of your life. C- clearly I'm wrong. The reason I'll say why is because it is... For those types of people, it is very valuable to get one-on-one time with their betters. And so they were like, listen, if this is how I have to do it, this is how I do it. But I can gain confidence in them. I can gain their trust. I can pitch them my ideas. I can sort of hear the goings-ons that normal people wouldn't. And I can use that to my advantage to get a fifth house. Pretty much, yes. It was that they had a private, intimate audience with the king every single day. Right. So it's like the king would now me, I'd just sit there and poop and try to pretend they weren't there. (laughs) Right. If I was the king, I'm saying. But I guess they didn't do that. You know, they would uh they'd chit chat whilst the royal chit chat. They'd shit chat, exactly. And so like this dude was one of the closest people to the king in in all of the kingdom, right? And other people other people knew that too. So they would like you know, they would like try to curry favor with the groom of the stool or they position the groom, petition the groom of the stool to like pass on their shit to the king, their message. I shouldn't, you know, not their shit in this case, but their, you know, if they mm-hmm. wanted to get in the king's ear or get, or, you know, they had, they wanted to get something done or whatever, they'd go to the groom of the stool and be right. like, hey, holler at the king for me. And then they, right. you know, uh, give the groom of the stool some fucking, 
uh, you know, I don't know, gold or feathers <laughs> now, or now, nice vases or like a sweet carpet or whatever <laughs> they were giving people back then to three donkeys in exchange for them to, you know, to get in the king's ear for them. So it was like a, it was like a very prestigious position, actually. And on that note, I still I wouldn't was, ever fucking no, want to do fuck, it. But. No, I wouldn't want to do it. But I will say this on that note, and granted, I can't know how I would be as a prince or a king. Probably a nightmare. You know, you grow up different. Uh, you don't think of people as equal to you in any way because, hell, it was God's divination that you're not to be that. But if I was me and they just made me king with all of my beliefs and they were like, you have to have a, a poop. A, a poop caddy, poop boy, um, yeah. a poop boy. It would make me feel better to know that they wanted to do it. That would, I'd be like, well, fuck, yeah. they want to be here. You know what I mean? So let me LBJ this motherfucker out. And, you know, yeah. Uh, yeah. I hear you. You know, you don't want to, you don't want to, you know, resentful uh, poop shire. A, a disgruntled poop, <laughs> a poop squire. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You don't want that. Um, yeah, so it obviously fell out of favor gradually over the years. It uh, went away. It came back. The position came back as the senior gentleman of the bedchamber. Right? <laughs> That's uh, the PC version. Yeah, right. Exactly. <laughs> uh, and when it was a queen instead of a king, obviously you couldn't have a groom with a stool if it's a queen. Right. So you'd have, the, you'd have the mistress of the robes is what it was called <laughs> when it was a, a lady. A lady who had to do it, um, but every it, time you think, like, w were there not ever time? Did they stand near the king or the queen at all times? So when they decide, because I have to imagine people were shitting a lot back then, because like you couldn't even drink the water because of how it had poop in it, you know? Right. So I feel like people were probably shitting more than we do now, and not good shits, violent diarrhea shits. So like, were they just there in the bullpen, and it was just like, you know, come I on in so. here. Or, yeah, okay. I think they're right. kind of always around. If it's poop time, hey, but, you know, yeah. get over here, poop boy. Sure. Uh, King got a poop, and then, uh, but it and it 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 sort of like uh, transitioned because of the nature of the role and how close to where the king or whatever became more like a trusted advisor and all this stuff, and then gen and then turned into like a like a financial position, like a master mm -hmm. of coin type. Oh, thing. really? Somehow, and then sort of like, and then sort of just the old version of it, like faded out entirely, like it, in the 1800s. Well, or that's so they don't that's, have grooms of the stool anymore. That, It'd be wild if Charles had a poop boy, but uh, well, to me, that seems like doesn't. a to me, that seems like a natural transition in probably what all the past poop boys were trying to do, which is like, listen, I'm gonna be the poop boy. But then I'm going to hit for him and I'm going to he'll be so impressed with me that he will appoint me to the master of coin or something like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's probably yeah. also the the thought. So it just ended up happening. Yeah, pretty much. But uh, I just thought uh, thought that was pretty wild. And I definitely. Yeah, I feel like. Could, I mean, it seems like it must have hit for all the kings to have a poop boy or they never Apparently. questioned it. Right. Because like they all did. It's like, yeah, of course I'm going to have a poop boy. I'm not going to do, I'm not going to wipe my own butt. That, right. A, there were probably not people. Not a pauper. Yeah, there were probably kings who didn't like it. They really didn't like it, but they needed it to be, to 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 convey how much they hit. That like I've got a dude that wipes my fucking ass. Y'all ain't shit. Yeah, and so uh, Dale, if you could, if you could also look up right here and show a picture of a, uh, if you just look for uh, close stool, William the Third's <laughs> close stool. That's why it's called groom of the stool, is because they had like I think it was a portable turlet, right? That was like a fancy box with a lid on it. Yeah, it looked like a. Like a like a like a fancy like chest to have in somebody's room like a square one. Yeah. But you open the lid and it's a hole there surrounded by cushions. It's like pleasant <laughs> and cushioned hole. Of course, yeah. you can't have the royal butt sitting on some <laughs> you know hard rock throne. <laughs> so it's like cushioned and that and the hole goes down into like a pewter chamber pot that's encased in wood inside the thing. So they like would you know you know 
summon the poop boy, and then you know, yeah. bring forth the coast stool, and they'd lift the lid, and he'd just sit down, I guess, wherever he was at. I might be misunderstanding that part, but I think it was like portable, you know, and he'd sit down and poop there, and then they'd close the lid and fucking haul it off or whatever. But it's a funny-looking thing, um, uh, knowing that it was exclusively for poop. It's funny to look at. Um, pewter, and uh, obviously I can't miss the opportunity to say or more like pewter, am pewter. I right? But mm -hmm. pew pewter uh, is the only the only knowledge I have of pewter is that that's what some early Monopoly uh, uh, little characters were made out of. That's a like a fancy soft metal, right? It's a soft metal. I mean, I know what pewter is. I know like I I could I know the color of it. If you saw yeah. it, like oh that looks like it's pewter, or whatever. But right. as far as like the quality of the metal or how uh, expensive yeah. or whatever it is. I have no idea, but just according to dictionary.com, it's a gray alloy made of tin and copper. Yeah. Um, I used to hear tin yeah. and lead. So. I used to hear more about pewter and I haven't heard much about pewter until you just said it. That's why I was wondering. Yeah, I guess you're right. I wonder what happened to pewter. It used to be big pewter in the nineties. Fuck it. Yeah. Pewter fell off, dude. I don't know what took its place, but pewter definitely fell off. It says, it's the fourth most popular metal used for jewelry making. It was definitely like um, second or third back in the day. It's fallen. Yeah, it's like uh, behind platinum, gold, and silver. Right. Why is mm. pewter no longer used? Yeah, again, I thought it might. I said it used to have lead in it. I figured that probably had something yeah, to do with it. that's but true. It said pewters containing lead are no longer used uh, due to health concerns stemming from uh, lead poisoning. But they <laughs> started making it without lead, I thought. But maybe they were just like, yeah. Let's not do not this worth anymore. It. Yeah, it's only don't four. Hit. Yeah, don't hit. Um. Anyway, all right. So, getting into my subject here: the Venn diagram, fancy and trash, uh, overlap in the world of reality television. This was number one, another one of your suggestions, and I immediately thought, yeah, that makes a lot of sense because it, it's as I alluded to earlier, it's either one or the other. And route. okay, well, first of all, reality TV, like. Where are you at on it? I mean, I think I know, but just for the audience, where are you hey, at well, on it? Well, the thing is, is that it's a very broad genre, and I don't right. like it. And so when you just say, do you like reality TV, I have to go, give me five examples of what you're talking about so I can tell you whether I do or not. Right. Because The Great British Bake Off is reality TV, right? Right. That's and literally and my favorite thing of all time. Right. So. And it's and it's great. It's great. Yeah. But it is reality TV. Um, there's uh, there's used to be a golf show called The Big Break that was reality TV, but it was game based. You know what I mean? And I yeah. really like that. So there's some I can't deny uh, reality shows that I, I do like. But when I look when I think of the term reality and what most people probably think of, they think of and also Survivor's not that bad. Uh, even I think Survivor is pretty great, actually. And, it, and also, it, it, well, Survivor dude, was like the first. It was the one. first. Survivor's it's, like. It started I mean, it. the real world exists, but Survivor yes. was the thing that kicked off the reality TV yeah. era uh, yes. as we know it, and it's uh, you know not but, like not without cause. Like, dude, I went back and started watching Survivor again with the boys like last year or so, and we watched it, like two or three seasons. But it's like it's, it's pretty solid in my opinion. It's pretty it's not a bad show. I think the point we're making is that. If the format is good, we have no problem with a scriptless program as long as the format is good. If the format's good, you get people in there doing their thing, that's nice to see. What, to me, reality television evolved into is, I mean, I, they all have a sort of skeleton format, but it's really just, look at this dumb motherfucker, do this dumb fucking shit. And, yeah. and I don't, like the Real Housewives, dude, fucking, and listen, I'm serious when I say there are people that I respect that watch that shit. Megan Gailey watches that type of shit. Megan Gailey is a brilliant comedian, so I can't say if you watch that shit, you're dumb. But, like, God damn, dude. Like, it's just... It, right. It, it's called scriptless, even though we know it's like, this is so clearly scripted and badly so. So, um... I guess really thinking about it, because you're right, reality TV is very broad. There's also, I don't like them, but there's all, there's all the music-based ones, all the singing yeah, competitions and stuff. Yeah, those I'm, are, I'm not... Those are reality TV, too. And it, but They've ruined really, things. Really, what I'm talking about here is like docu-soaps or docu-follow, yeah. the ones where it's like, look at this dumb motherfucker do this dumb shit, and everybody yes. point and laugh at him. I'm not and a I fan. I feel like in that genre of reality TV, which I thought was huge, but uh, and it is huge, but like, 
it's not like far and away the leader in terms of the subgenres of reality of the top 10 most popular reality shows, which include all these kinds we're talking about. Uh, only the Kardashians and the housewives right. made the top 10. Uh, no right. trash based ones were in the top 10. Honey Boo Boo wasn't in during uh, its the run. Re the rest of them, the rest of the eight were all like, American Idol, The Voice, Big Brother, Survivor, whatever, like, you know, that type of thing, like competition shows or whatever. But that's so, only because Honey Boo Boo ended, right? Like, if they'd have kept, kept up with that family, you, you don't think it would have been... if you think about it, it's like, Honey Boo Boo, like, Honey Boo Boo was like a short-lived cultural phenomenon, but like, the Kardashians were a thing when she was oh, a yeah. thing, right? And they're yeah. still a thing now, and like, the Housewives sure. are just like, Honey Boo Boo was just never on that level, right. I don't think. Like, right. maybe It briefly, was a flash in the pan. Staying yeah. power? Absolutely not. So, but anyway, like they Andrew are Luck. It was here for a minute. We talked it up. It was great. And then it, right before our eyes, fucking out of here. Yeah. Um, but they are still huge, these docu-soap kinds. But yeah, I have no patience for them whatsoever. I've never been able to watch them. But you think about those and you're like, these subjects are either like rich people yeah. or trash but even oh, the ones where even the ones where it's writ right, yeah. I mean, cops I, yeah, heads. cops. <laughs> cops, heads. Well, cops was like cops was before any of them, right? I like, know. Cops yeah, was 80s. super long run, and people like don't even really think about cops as being one of those. But I, mean, I know yeah, it is. Yeah, I totally just forgot about cops. But uh, the, I guess there are also the crime versions of it, like the and first forty eight and some of that shit. That's another subgenre they have. There's the work like. Cr the crazy jobs subgenre, but a lot yep. of times that covers, you know, poor people too, or working class it does. people, like fucking Dirty jobs swamp did people, axe yeah. man, you know. Dirty jobs was good. It was a the good show. catch. Let me ask you about this while we're here, because you may not, because I'm just now considering it reality TV too, but maybe it would be in a subgenre of reality TV interviews, such as Jerry Springer, Ricky Lake, Maury, all these things. And with those, it fits under my narrative of they're actually scripted, but they're trying to pass that they're not scripted. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I've got, I've uh, never talked about this, uh, but I got duped into doing a pilot for one of those types of shows. Yeah. I felt like I was straight up lied to by the producer about what yeah, it was going to be. And I got there and realized that's what it was. And I was so fucking upset. And, uh, but thank God it didn't get made. The pilot never aired. Uh, but, but in doing that, so it was very, it was totally one of those daytime TV trash shows. Yeah. Right. And the pilot they were doing, they had a bunch of, uh, like, you know, liberal commentators or you know, whatever, like including me. And then they brought out, <laughs> A bunch of Nazis. Right? You haven't even like, told me this shit yet. I was so embarrassed by the whole thing, dude. <laughs> I mean, I pretty, I'm pretty sure when it was happening. So, do you remember? Do you like when I, I you? I wish you could see my face as it plays out. Like when I realize, like what I've, what's happening, what I've signed up for, whatever. Oh my god, dude! It was it was so awful. But anyway, I uh, they lie like motherfuckers. You remember, producers. Do you remember, I was like, I was told it was like it was presented to me like it was going to be like a like a pilot for like a Bill Maher type of show. Yeah, right. Like you know, political debates where you do whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah, like how he'll have a panel and they talk about politics and shit. Yeah. Like that's how it was pitched to me. It was a new show like that. But that's not what it was at all. It was some fucking Jerry Springer type. They bring them out there, try to get us fucking pitted against each other. And I was very much like, fuck these dudes. But I didn't, I didn't really engage with it because I was like, no, I ain't doing this shit. But, but my, my whole point with it is though, I will say in that limited experience, uh, they didn't, and maybe they were a lesser ran organization or whatever, but like they didn't give us any kind of, uh, like script they didn't like talk to us about like right it'd be great if you could do this here's what's gonna happen you think you could throw one right. of these in there they okay. didn't do any of that um i'm not well, saying Jerry Springer fair, didn't the, i don't know the degree to which it, i'm just saying i have a limited experience with that particular what, format and it wasn't they didn't do any of that at all and, but maybe and, they're amateurs i don't know well, i was gonna say to be fair when i did uh and this show didn't get picked up what well, is the pandemic but when i did the barbecue show i thought it was gonna be like that too 
And whereas like they have the winner and they, but it wasn't, they literally put a microphone on me and, and just let me loose for 37 hours and they cut it down and it was all real, you know? Well, see, but on the flip side, and we talked about all this on a recent well-read episode, but not on putting on airs and it's directly relevant to the conversation now. On the flip side, I also once, and this was fun, I had a great time doing this, but I also once got cast in a comedy stunt show, a candid camera, Impractical Jokers type. It literally was a Impractical Jokers like production off, basically, yeah. yeah, right. That that never went anywhere. But I got cast in that along with Drew and his wife and our other buddy, and uh, and that making that pilot. It's not that it was scripted, but like they made sure they got good shit. You right. know what I mean? They would yeah. like. If you're out interacting in public, uh, you know, trying to get good reactions from in public, they might send a PA walking yeah. down the street, you know, somebody that works for the show for you to interact with. Right. If the shot didn't work out or whatever the first time, they would redo it again. So it's not that it was like scripted, but like there was a lot of, yeah, you know, tune up, a lot of, t- of tune ups. Yeah. TV yeah. tune ups. Which, that were dude, going you, on, you, so. I mean, you got to do I don't that have if a you're trying to any. make good I, yeah. television. Of course. I've never, I don't have any kind of issues with that either. Uh, but so anyway, I, we just got off talking about our own reality experiences. But, That's fine. Uh, oh, Jerry Springer. I, um, he, uh, I didn't know. Did you know there was a guy named, uh, Morton Downey Jr.? Yes. Morton Downey Jr. Absolutely. You remember he was him? The, uh, I didn't I, remember no, no, no. him at all. I don't remember, I don't remember him. I have learned and I, I'm going to, I don't, can't remember it right now for some reason, but I've listened to podcasts where some old heads talked about Morton Downey Jr. and what he did for like that industry and shit. Like I, he was I don't, like I, the proto Jerry Springer. I, yes. I always thought that like I in my head it was like that daytime format, like Phil Donahue, Sally Jesse Raphael, Oprah. Yeah, that existed, and then Jerry Springer came out and was like, "I'm really gonna trash the joint up." Like right. I thought he, but Morton Downey Jr. was pretty much doing that in the 80s yeah. like 10 plus years before jerry springer got on board which i didn't realize i watched predator 2 this weekend and morton it fucking kicks ass morton down uh morton downey jr plays a version of himself in that movie and i didn't know who he nice. was and then found out went and watched small clips of dude you talk about trash tv from the fucking 80s this dude yeah. he's, sm- he's chain smoking the whole time he's instigating everything let me tell you one of the jokes he said off the cuff and it <laughs> He's talking to some lady, I think, about like the crime rate in America or something. And he's like, it was something like that. And he's like, you're really going to sit there and act like we don't have a problem? He's like, there were seven rapes in this city in the last month alone. And I was only involved in six of them. (laughs) Crowd goes wild. Everybody's laughing their ass off. (laughs) <laughs> Great well, got joke, me. Got me. Got yeah, me. and he did like he didn't literally drop the mic, but he hits her with that and then like spins on his heels and yeah, fucking yeah, you know yeah, vamps yeah. and shit. Yeah, it's yeah. Like, good lord, dude. We it's should do like, a special rewatch. Me and you should watch an episode of Morton Downey Jr. and and comment on it. But it's just why it's like all a lot of this stuff that we think it's like a sign of the decay of Western civilization or whatever. Right. It's like it's been going it, on. It's nothing new, you know. Yeah, like right. It, it's almost never anything new, and it reminded me of that. But anyway, shit, where was I? So yeah, it's always either rich people or trash people, and it's the the rationale. I you know looked in it, doing my research. Nothing groundbreaking. It's just what you would automatically assume. As middle to, class uh, ain't why interesting. Why do you think that is? Yeah. Right. Yeah, middle class ain't interesting. But like, why? Like, it's built for the people in the mid, and it's two different uh, dynamics at play here. But they're both very obvious. Meaning, well, it's well, it's voyeur, it's voyeurism, right? And it's voyeurism, and in one case, it's like, okay, uh, Kardashians, they're fancy, they're elite, they're whatever the fuck. But at the same time, you go, but our target is people who don't live like that at all because they like to live vicariously through them. Exactly. And now the opposite with Honey Boo Boo, it's a lot of people who think they're already better than us and need it confirmed to them. And they're looking at them as if they're at a fucking zoo. Exactly. That's exactly right. Yes, it's like it's escapism for the fancy people versions, right? And also it's like, but mostly in both directions, it's to like make people feel better about themselves or whatever. And the poverty porn version is obvious why they would work that way. But like with the rich people, it's like the housewife. I was actually thinking the real housewife. Exactly. Yes. 
Right. And I, I feel like the Real Housewives are like the ultimate sort of Venn diagram example because like that's another thing. It's like they watch these fancy people rich and they got these nice lives, but they're also trashy as yes. fuck. Like the way they act and shit. Jersey and Shore. I think that like makes, you know, people just feel better about of course themselves it does. and everything. And they do live vicariously and all that. But then, yeah, on the poverty end of the spectrum, it's very much a like, whoo, well, I'm actually <laughs> yeah. doing pretty good <laughs> yeah, compared, right. to, compared to these motherfuckers. God well, damn. And, and not uh, only I'm doing pretty good compared to these people, it's also confirmation bias for a lot of coastal elites. Like they, you know, they look at that and go, see, they shouldn't be able to vote. Look at them, <laughs> you know? Right. Uh and we've had some, obviously some poverty porn shit in this country. Honey Boo Boo is probably the biggest example. It's funny. Another another place where the Venn diagram overlaps was fucking Duck Dynasty because it's yeah. like oh yeah they They're were rich. they were one thing playing as the other thing. You yeah. know what I mean? They were like both yes. at the same time. They it's were like the they Kardashians. Seemed like, in seemed like money. trash, but they yeah. were but they're rich at the same time. Yeah. So you get both all at once. Um. That's another thing. I had some experience with them too. Went and did a thing with them during the pandemic. Nice you had people, fun, right? but I had a yeah. It was yeah. It was a good time. They were cool. I mean, super conservative, but that was the whole point. Uh, and they were like respectful about it. They weren't assholes. The wife in particular was. She was a super sweet lady. But they uh, like I remember I came back and and I'd heard people say this before. Like you'll see those pictures pop up from them when they were younger, and they look like Ivy Preppy, League prep prep college boys. boys. Yeah, right. Yeah. And people like to show those around. And I, and I remember Mark, Smart Mark, who you also know from the Extended Skew Universe, he, uh, he said he was like, he was just saying that it's all just bullshit. They're complete frauds or whatever. It's just an act they put on or whatnot. And I had to say, dude, I was like, I was like, well, I just spent like 14 hours with them. And I think they're just rednecks with money. Like, I right. don't think yeah. they're. I didn't, it didn't that's feel like they were both. It is a thing. Like Dude, people they forget fucking that's a thing, duck, they, just, they for real duck hunt. That's some redneck shit. It's they not, seem, it's like if you, and we've all met them before, it's rare, but you do meet them. And it's like these red ass people who, for whatever reason, have a bunch of money. And it's like, that's pretty much who they was. Like, for, as far as I could tell, like, I didn't get the impression at all that, that they were fraudulent in that way. It's like, no, they're just red asses who have money. I was about know? to say, so, man, like if you look at any old pictures of me from high school, I'm wearing polos, I'm wearing nice shirts and stuff. Number one, because my mother wanted me to, and she bought my clothes. Cause if it was up to me, I'd be wearing a fucking sweatshirt every day. I didn't care, but I mean, I did like looking nice, but like I was also then leaving school to go to a barn and drink moonshine. <laughs> you know what I'm right. saying? Like nobody that met me would go, yes, this guy seems like he missed an opportunity to go to duke even though i looked like it for sure yeah do you know uh is amber into these types of, like do you know put your sister or anybody do you, who do you know my sister that's into like the my fan, sister the, dude the kardashians or the housewives or any what, of that shit my sister is and my mom are super and that's why i don't that's why i i don't call them all stupid because i'm like well they and they tell me exactly why they're like look it's just mindless television that i just can unwind and just watch we love gossip you know we're women that that love gossip not that every woman loves gossip they do but uh my mom my sister and they they like uh brought andy cohen he's like the godfather of like all this shit and like they worship at the altar of andy cohen and he has the housewives on his show all the time and oh, they right. love that he's shit. Got like a talk show right on, he has on a bravo talk show where he okay. yeah where he exclusively talks to stars from bravo's uh, oh, reality okay. shows and i'll be honest with you i have been in the room when my mom and kirby were watching that shit and of course was just like jesus fucking christ can we put it on anything else and uh like, I do get it. Like, it is entertaining. Like, they're saying some wild shit. Andy's really funny. He's drunk. He's calling them on their shit. And so, in, in that regard... And, dude, and, and well, you know what? Let me finish with this. I am a super fan of professional wrestling. And it ain't much different. So, I really can't talk too much shit. Now, I will say with wrestling, like, it's an art. It's a hundred percent an art. You have to be a borderline fucking acrobat. But when it comes to the storylines of wrestling, yeah, I got no leg to stand on. Yeah. I, um, 
Yeah, I've never gotten it. I mean, I do get it in how we broke it down earlier. I get like what the appeal is, but I just can't do it myself. I can't but, do it uh, either, but I understand. And then on the on the poverty end, again, we've had poverty porn. We've had some Honey Boo Boo, prominent example. Uh, I remember on our short-lived podcast, Bubba Shot the Podcast, we, Thanks, covered, uh, we covered the song. Yeah, it was tremendous fun. We should bring it back. He should bring it back. But it was, uh, we covered the song Lifestyles of the Not-So-Rich and Famous, which Great is from song. like, 92 or something like that like early like before real world was even yeah. a thing and i remember listening to that song again for the first time in a long time and i was like i was like dude this yeah. song is like prophetic like yes, this song is, is way ahead of its time because it's yeah. like the whole thing is like they're gonna put us on the lifestyles of the not so rich and I've famous they're gonna watch us go hog wild over beans and barbecue yeah and it's just he like predicted honey, honey boo boo and all yes. that type of shit Back then, uh, which I thought was pretty wild, the, but the, I, the, the song's even more of a banger when you consider that because, like, I I always thought I loved that fucking song, and then like you pointed that out on the show, and I was like, dude, this is fucking insane, and yeah, it, yeah. But we can't hold a candle to another country uh, in terms of poverty porn. What country do you think is way more obsessed with poverty porn than we are? Oh, that's a holy shit! I've I've never even considered it. So like. So I need to be thinking of a country that is known for being poor, maybe? No. Uh, okay, okay. Known All for right. being classist. Okay, so uh, England. Yes, England. Really? Yes, I didn't, I don't, yeah. I, see, I'd watch these shows because it's research for the show. Uh Apparently it's a whole thing over there and they get a lot of shit for it all the time, but they've got stuff like a show called Benefit Street, which takes place on a street in Birmingham where 90% of the uh, the uh, residents are on welfare. And yeah. it's just like a docu-follow thing, just like a Jersey Shore thing, but with these poor people and it shows them fucking doing drugs, getting hammered, robbing uh, liquor stores and shit. That's gross. Right? And everybody just eats it up. Yeah, Just watch The uh, Wire! Right, yeah. And then there's, there's another one called Britain's hardest grafter or something which is like what? yeah i think something's getting a little lost in uh not translation yeah because grafter is grafter. to graft a thing onto a thing yeah, right? but also isn't a graft like a i mean a, i know there's a grift there's a grift yeah and you know but like i anyway whatever it's where they take like 20 poor people and you have to be either unemployed underemployed or making just barely minimum wage like they have a cutoff the poverty limit in england whatever it is it's like twenty nine thousand pounds or something like that a year you have to be under that to qualify they get 20 of them on there and pit them against each other in a in a bunch of work Bum related fights? task no it's to see to determine who's the hardest worker right and okay. whoever's determined to be the hardest worker gets a job no just the <laughs> amount of money that's the poverty. I said the poverty limit over there is considered to be 29,000. They just get that? They just get that. They just dude, get that and then and leave them at that. It's like, dude, well, this is all you, it's all you need anyway, right? There's so You've many people. You've been making it work with less yeah, than this. Right. So There's so I, many I, people that would look at that. They would a lot, So many people that I know would look at that and go, well, like, hey, they're giving them an opportunity. You know, right. it was either that or nothing. And to those people, I'd just like to say, like, bro, just think about that's your uncle or whatever they're putting into that. It's it's you're humiliating a person for yeah. it's not you work really hard. I'm going to give you this twenty nine thousand dollars. It's like, here's some compensation for how much we just fucking embarrassed you right. in public to millions right. of people. You dirty, dirty piece of swamp shit. Absolutely. Then there's another one called uh, can't pay. We'll take it away. Uh, <laughs> Where they get their cars repoed and stuff yeah it's where people <laughs> it's where people can't afford to pay their bills so they show up and take dog their shit. the bounty hunter just and uh, it's just yeah and and uh and that's the whole thing but just the name of it dude can't pay we'll take it away is, yeah it's just so, and that's a show know. it's so they funny just, but it's a show yeah they just turned repoing into a show which like a guy said dog the bounty hunter at least that one the person's done bad things you know but right. fuck me, man. So, yeah, it's like a whole thing over there because they're just like so class obsessed. Right. They you know are. I mean, yeah, dude. Uh, I mean, it's so wild. You, we are in we are in America as well at a certain to a certain degree, for sure. But like England's way different. And I'm not shitting on all our English fans. I think that most of y'all would probably be like, yeah, it's pretty raw, isn't it? Um, over there that no one. <laughs> 
I don't know. There's not this sense of like, it's, you know, he's just a hardworking England man. You know, it's like, right. it's like they, we don't, they don't really have that. It's just like, you're either posh or you're daft, you yeah, know, or you're a, you know, you're a fucking chav or whatever. Yeah. Right. Uh, so in closing, I just, I looked up a couple of like, uh, uh, other examples from things that I had forgotten. And now I remembered of just like ridiculous examples of these types of things. Do you remember Joe millionaire? I always uh, thought this, I always thought this one was, was kind of funny. I mean, it's definitely I, fucked up, but I, I, thought I remember, it was funny. I remember the name, but what was, what did he do? Joe millionaire was like, uh, it was played like, uh, Fox's version of the bachelor. It's like, this, yeah, yeah, this yeah, yeah, yeah. Rich, yeah. good looking dude that all yeah. these women have to compete over. Right. Mm-hmm. But it and they don't know, but the truth is he's a construction worker yes. who makes like twenty thousand dollars a year and ain't got yeah. a pot to piss in. That's right? kind of fun. And they're all throwing themselves <laughs> off. Of, yeah, but but so there was there was that one. It got drug, obviously. And then this one was in uh and now I, th- I think it's different. I think that one's different because it's exposing people's shittiness. And I'm for that. Right. Put that shit yeah. on display. Yeah, I know, but it's still, it's also like, the, yes, it's exposing the shittiness of gold diggers or whatever, but it's still also just being like, like, but you think he's great, <laughs> yeah, but here's but a he twist. Don't he don't <laughs> hit. It turns out he don't hit. <laughs> Little do they know, he doesn't hit. He don't hit. hit. Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> so a similar thing I'd never heard of, maybe you have. Uh, it, have you ever heard of I Want to Marry Harry? Was it like Prince Harry? Yes. And he it's signed up for this shit? No, no. And that's the whole point. It's like, it's oh, 12. Oh, they ab- think he did? They think <laughs> it's 12 American women who are vying to marry. Obviously, this is before Megan and I. I'll watch vying, this shit, dude. Vying to marry Harry, the Duke of Sussex, right? But it's just a lookalike actor. It's not him at all. Oh, the whole my thing God. is a lie. That's and I, dude, bad. again, going I didn't back know to what they you were saying. a lookalike into it. Yeah. It, yeah. They, they, are with him the whole time. It's like the bachelor with Prince Harry. It's just, oh it's not God. actually Prince Harry. And you're talking about exposing the shittiness of gold diggers with this one too. I'm kind of like, dude, if you are fucking dumb enough yes. to genuinely Fuck believe you. that the actual Prince Harry is Would do doing this. some fucking dating show bullshit like that on reality TV in America, you know, I mean, it turns out he is an attention whore, but still, if you yeah, think right, you're fucking, right. then you're, you deserve it as far as I'm concerned. It's like, going to be fucking, so hilarious when Meghan Markle and him get divorced and he does this for real. Cause I could see it. I used to not right. be able to see it, but like I could see it now that yeah, dude, like that's the type of shit. Like if you're tricking, like when you were talking about earlier about the grafters or whatever, like tricking poor people and, and you know, whatever, like that's wrong. But if the, if your show is tricking people, I, gold digging dumbass whores like I'm right. I'm for that I could sign up for that yeah this one's not really fancy or trash but I think you'll think it's funny it was called best funeral ever <laughs> 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 and it's about a funeral home where they throw these wild lavish funerals for people uh, including one episode featured a a deceased former bowler whose family remembers her by sending her casket down the lane (laughs) for one last strike. So they roll her casket down the lane into the bowling pins and shit like that. And that one's just, uh, they should have thrown her greased it up a little bit. Yeah. That's a bit silly. Isn't it's it? a bit but, silly. Um, did, did it get a strike though? I mean, of course it did. It's huge. Of course it's a big ass casket. Yeah. But I was uh, just thinking like the wheels under it is it's not the, casket's not going there's the wheels so there is a possibility that you end up with a 710 and that would be so fucking funny if yeah. she gets a 710 <laughs> split on, on her, her last, last yeah. her last roll yeah they just kill All a right. baby and pick it up then the last one and we'll uh we will move on i remember this one too and this one's funny to me and just how like how early 2000s it is, I guess, and how, just like how it would never happen today. But Fox had a, a reality show called The Swan. Do you remember The Swan I, at all? I, I, I do. And I think that it was, it was they dressed, they made an attractive woman out to be ugly. No, no. Or was they, it the opposite? Yes. They cast a bunch of ugly women, right? <laughs> and then... Like send them to the dentist, literal plastic yeah. surgeons, makeovers, new hair, all this stuff. But it's like just trying, you know, trying to make them worth something. You know yeah, what I mean? Right. Like, yeah, right. And they seem like, like they hit. 
it's just yeah right but they didn't used to but it's so like it's just so wild that's to crazy. me I, like it's so crazy because it's like we all know the woman's value is directly tied to her physical appearance so we got these worthless broads right Dude. but not to worry fox is coming to the rescue with a team of cracked surgeons who will turn her in to a good looking whore and they uh they like imagine the casting for it too it's like yeah right you're we're an looking, ugly broad. <laughs> yeah, we're looking for for ugly bitches, right? Exclusively, and then, <laughs> and you know, some people though, like, got denied. Or like, oh yeah, well, not no. that ugly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, like, no, something we can <laughs> fix. Yeah, God right. Well, and that's like if you look at if you go back and like Google some of the people contestants who were on there. Some of them in their before pictures, it's a little bit like that not another teen movie scene right. where it's take like, the glasses off. She's got a, ugh, she's got a ponytail and glasses and paint covered overalls, but it's like a <laughs> supermodel underneath. They've got them in all yeah. like frumpy clothes, no makeup, making ugly faces and shit, but they're so, not bad looking. Do you and think so their trick like, was like they found women and intentionally made them a little bit uglier just for the yes, before shoot? I yeah. do think that. Yeah. Yes. yes. I think they were looking for women that are like not ugly you know they're like we don't want anyone really uh not actually just people ugly. that would we just need never... people that we can make it seem like yeah. they're ugly people on who would tv yes and people then... who would only ever be on tv in this specific circumstance right yeah yeah so thought that shit was wild there's also one called black and white i think it was where they literally put white people in blackface and put black people in white face <laughs> and then had them like yeah that one, I, that one was produced by Ice Cube, I think. I think that was an Ice Cube joint. I'm pretty sure. Sorry, Cube, if I'm getting that wrong. It was some. It was a, I would like a, a prominent black celebrity uh, was involved in that one. I remember, and it was supposed to be like social commentary and all this stuff. You know what I mean? But it's still like it's you know. In my mind, it's pretty 50 out there. Cent. Yeah, in my mind, it's fifty cent. Well, I will back up for just two seconds. I'm gonna say my piece, but I think it's an important thing to say. Uh, the Swan Show, right? That was in what, like 2005 or something like that? 2003, I think it was. It was okay. like early, early 2000s for so, sure. So the 21st goddamn century. So I know there's a lot of people who uh, fall on different sides of the spectrum when it comes to the women's empowerment movement and the Me Too movement and all that shit. There's some people like, oh, they're being. They're they're you know they're just over uh, overreacting to all this shit, like. But think when you've heard every single thing that we've just said during this show, can't you for a second just go, you know, I think they have a point, <laughs> you know, like that's so right. f fucking Christ, man. I mean, yeah. don't get me wrong. I'm glad that it's in the past because it's funny to talk about. And I'm but Jesus Christ, like that's not. <sighs> yeah, dude, if you pitch that shit today, rightfully so, they would kick you out of fucking room of course and rightfully yeah, so dude. rightfully right. like a lot of times people go oh you could never do that today and i'd say for the most part it's usually i, I wouldn't say wouldn't i'd say shouldn't jesus fucking christ we're learning all right right <laughs> fuck that was a uh, was produced by ice cube by the way i looked it up just <laughs> okay, to verify right real quick. So. i would have loved it so much if it wasn't and this clip went viral and fucking cube came for you yeah that would buddy i got i gotta tell you something i don't want I no smoke from ice cube no, well i'm not no. your friend in that situation normally yeah, if somebody's I, coming yeah. at you i'd be like that's my fucking boy but if it's ice cube i'm be like fucking tell him cube and then i'm gonna be yeah, standing over you shit. yeah i'm gonna be standing over you later going he got knocked the fuck out yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I think that'll do it for me in reality TV. We're a solid hour in, so I believe it's time to move on to history with Professor Cho. Uh, right after need, this. Right after this. We're back. It's time for history of Professor Cho on the subject of the defenestrations of Prague, which, as I said up top, all I know about that, I don't know anything about it. I, I maybe I've heard of it, but I can't tell. But I, it seems to involve 
people, windows, things, people being thrown out of windows, and I guess yep. in Prague. Yes, uh, that's a great yeah. guess, and is as, technically and that, true. As to why or mm-hmm. what was going on there, any of that stuff, I don't have the slightest notion. Well, there's four that I want to talk about today, and while they were all different, uh, they mostly had the same reason for doing so. I'll get into that. So in a there's second. a whole the, series of yep of these. Yes, because I'd always heard the defenestration of Prague. So when I when I was going to research this, I was like, all right, there was one defenestration, and then it's like the one in sixteen eighteen, the one, and I was like, oh fuck, like they've got like several notable defenestrations, and I'm certain that there were like. Maybe and these are these are all defenestrations that happen like at the capital of like um you know councilmen and like royal people or fucking like pope shit. So I'm assuming there were some like a bunch of amateur defenestrations that were going on. We're like because de- defenestration doesn't mean it happened in a castle, but those these are all what these are. I assume there was plenty of people who just threw somebody out of a fucking hut window or some shit, you know. Um, but so yes, as we talked about earlier, defenestration literally means throwing a motherfucker out a window, right? And I would like to give a little background on Prague, uh, which I'd always heard of Prague, but I admittedly don't know much about it, but it was the capital of the kingdom of Bohemia located in the modern day Czech Czech Republic. Republic. Czech yeah. Republic, exactly. In the 1400s, Prague had a population of around 40,000 people, making it one of the largest cities in Europe because there just wasn't anybody. There wasn't anybody back in the day. That's basically the equivalent of nowadays a city having two to three million people, right? But like back then, that's before we. Uh, that's for the baby boom, I guess. Like goddamn, like it's it's wild the exponential rate with which human population has grown. <laughs> like we mm-hmm. just and the earth ain't getting no bigger, baby. It mm-hmm. ain't getting no bigger. So no, you know, need, need to figure the moon out. We need or to Mars. Figure the moon. <laughs> yeah, it was also like a. It was like the. Uh, cultural center of Europe and such. Like they had a bunch of theater stuff going on. It was a very fancy place. Uh, My man Mozart was either from there or lived there. Can't remember what, but so that's, that's Prague. Uh, The first defenestration took place in 1419. So this predates Shakespeare by a little bit, I believe. But so this fella, his name was Jan Zelivsky. Uh, he was a Hussite preacher, and the Hussites were a proto-Protestant Christian movement, named so because uh, they followed this guy named Jan Hus, so Hus, Hussite. So a little side note on Jan Hus, because I think it's important. Jan Hus, uh, he was considered by many to be the first ever church reformer, like <clears throat> the first person to be like, I, you know, I don't know, right? Like everybody was like, well, so no. he, he dates. Uh, Mar- I should know when Martin Luther was, but I don't. He pre. This is pre Martin sure, Luther. I'm stuff. I'm pretty sure that he predates Martin Luther, but not by much. And like, because at that point you had uh, there were two sects of Protestants, which were the Lutherans and the Calvinists, um, which is something that I do want to talk about later. Um, it's it may be a footnote in here. I can't remember what all I wrote down, but uh, yeah, it says Martin Luther was. Uh, I, almost a hundred years later, it was fifteen okay. seventeen, I guess, there when Martin Luther nailed his shit to the door and, said, "Hey, this don't hit." And a lot of the and the, a couple of the other defenestrations take place after Martin Luther. Martin Luther was clearly like uh, influenced by this guy, Jan Hus. Uh, like I said, the first church reformer, the first person to just be look at the church and be like that needs to be different right mm-hmm. so and as you know Trey, you, couldn't uh, just, you couldn't just say or do that shit back no then. You matter you could not it was not a time that was uh amenable to the idea of saying that needs to be different uh right they were like no different don't hit same hits and now we're gonna draw and quarter you for implying <laughs> otherwise yes 100 percent uh because as you know the catholics they historically do not like reform and i, w- I would say this no. like Back then, you definitely didn't do it. You still, if you do it now, you're still going to face consequences, but it won't be def- def- defenestration or like you're not going to get murdered because we have laws that protect religious freedom and stuff. But of course, back then, that that wasn't like Thomas Jefferson hadn't wasn't born in to save their lives. You know what I mean? So right. So they they Catholics ain't with this, and so Pope Alexander V issued a decree or a a papal bull, 
that effectively excommunicated Jan Hus. And we talked about mm-hmm. excommunication on a previous episode. This means that basically in the eyes of the church and in their opinion, in the eyes of the Lord, you're fucking out. Like, anybody- I think it's uh, notable to point out we did talk about excommunication specifically in the context of it happening to a pig. So. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I totally forgot that it was a big, but yeah, so he's excommunicated. It was never like, basically they said it, they were like, you're, you're excommunicated, but they never went through like the process of making it like formal. So it wasn't like technically enforced. Uh, regardless, he lived the next two years of his life in exile. Cause he was like, God damn dude, the fucking, you seen what these Catholics will do to a kid, let alone me. What the fuck? So where'd the exile lived- entail? Do you have that in there? Like, uh, no, I don't. And I should, as I was reading this, I was like, God, cause what happens when I'm writing these notes, I'll, I'll read all these stories. And usually I'll see like, he lived the next two years in exile. And then I'll be like, okay, cool. Now I got to find out where he was in exile. And I'll go to all these separate things. And I was just on such a roll that I fucking didn't like, I did the whole, you know, side note on the, what I'm doing is a side note right now on Jan Hus, but no, I don't know where he lived in exile. Let's just say, uh, at Rome. He was in Rome. Man. Well, because it's always like Rome. exile. They stayed exiling people back then. Yeah. And it's like, I know sometimes it's like an island they get exiled to or whatever, but it's also always been funny to me. It's like sort of like there's no, it's sort of like when like uh, one of our governors today will ship a bunch of Mexicans to another state or whatever. Yeah. It's like the other state is like, what the fuck? Well, hold on. Here. <laughs> Why we got like, them? Yeah. Like the pe- yeah. Like, that presumably happened with these people too. Like you just show up and be like, Hey, I'm here. I've been exiled here. And they're like, well, we didn't sign off on that, but apparently, you know, you could just do that. Well, like, no, two, you got to deal with them now. Two things. <laughs> That's funny, but two things. I think that him living in exile was like his choice. Like, I don't think they didn't, cause like I said, they didn't enforce this. They didn't actually exile him. I think it was him being like, I don't really need to be around these motherfuckers right now. It's not safe for me. You know, they haven't like legally enforced this, but they, they don't okay. want me here. So I don't think so he was sh- like more on the run or on yeah, the lamb or whatever. Yeah, just just kind of like low. yeah, laying low. He was laying yeah. low. And I would say, you know, back then it was different. Like it's not like they had pictures of people and shit. Like wherever he went to live in exile, he could have just said not I'm a different person. He could just said a different name and they wouldn't have been like, That's the man that the mm-hmm. said that the Pope uh, sucks, you know, mm-hmm. or whatever. Uh, so he lived in exile for the next, uh, worst, uh, worst type of exile, by the way, in my opinion is being set adrift. Uh, Ooh, yeah. no, that's the worst one. Adrift. If you're going to pick being exiled, it's like you choose different country over being set adrift. Oh yeah. That's but a, no, the old, the old Eskimo Papa. Yeah. Nobody wants that. dude. Yeah. Fucking no, hell no. That's sent out on the ice flow. <laughs> the sea. That don't hit. So he lived in exile for two years until the Catholic Council got together and asked him to come speak out of nowhere. They're just like, hey, we want you to come talk to us. And by the way, uh, it's safe. Like, you're cool. Don't worry about it. We just want to talk. We just want to hear your opinions and maybe that we can, like, you know, reach some common ground or something. Uh, But uh, when he did, they threw him in prison. Right. He just got there. He started talking and they were just like, yeah, fuck all that heresy. Uh, so they, 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 and then they throw him in prison and they come to him and they're just like, Hey dude, all right, you're in prison. You was talking some shit that we don't like, but here's the deal. If you will just recant your views, we'll let you out. You can go back to wherever it is you were. You can say here, all you gotta do is just be like, yo, motherfucker, I'm wrong. I Pope see does that hit. now. Pope yeah. does hit. Right. Mm-hmm. Uh, to which he said to them, I would not for a chapel of gold retreat from the truth. Uh, queer, and so mm-hmm. so naturally, Trey. What do you think happened next? Did keeping it real go wrong? Keeping it real went real wrong. Yeah, <laughs> figured. How do you think he died? Getting thrown out a window? No, nah, they burnt him at a stake. Oh, okay. uh, unfortunately, he Bit is not one. Of, there. He's not one of the defenestrations. He's just someone who inspired the person who led to what would become the first defenestration. So back to Yom Zelsky. Uh, following his master's footstep, Yom starts talking mad shit about the cac- Catholics publicly. He's just like, "Yo, fuck them robes." Ain't shit. That gold's fake, yeah. motherfucker. You got a whole boy just to give you water, you punk ass bitch. Yeah. Your hat don't hit. Stupid Fuck spaghetti. Hat. 
Stupid yeah. hat. Yeah, all that shit. He's just talking mad shit. He tells all his congregation that they need to storm the Capitol and take the government for themselves. And all the converse congregation was just like, okay, word, but how about this? We do that and we strap up, motherfucker, right? Which I assume back then, uh, strapping up was pitchforks. Pitchforks, torches, yeah, right. Swords. They didn't have guns, you know. Like, they didn't, right? Like, they... 15, wait, 1400s? 15, uh, they probably had so. some if sort they of... they did, war- it was like fucking... Like pirate guns, it didn't hit. Yeah, right. pistols, big, <laughs> yeah. those big blunder buses with like yeah. a trumpet shaped barrel at the end of it. And it's like, who thought that was a good idea? But yeah, uh, right. if they had that, I, but I'm not sure on the history of guns. It probably wasn't much. But yeah, no, if you got a mob, I feel like yeah. that, they didn't even need to say that. It's yeah, like, right. Well, obviously, you know, we, they didn't the say mob that. forms and they just hand out pitchforks yeah. and torches. They and well, like, they didn't say that. That's why I'm just assuming it. So oh, this, yeah. this, I, I just saw that and I was like, dude, I know it's the it's the fucking Frankenstein scene. You know what Got I mean? To. So they storm the Capitol and they start throwing motherfuckers out of windows. Ten to be exact. They threw ten motherfuckers out of the window. And all of this, by the way, started what's known as the Hussite Wars that I mentioned earlier. And they did not go well, which resulted in our boy Yom Zalewski getting his head chopped off. And I, I told you I'd bring it back to horse shit. He got his head chopped off. And to add insult to injury, they displayed it on a pile of horse shit. They cut his head anyway. off. Cut his head off. Put it on a pile of horse shit, right? Uh, and, and by the way, this will not be the last time, Trey, that we talk about horse shit today. You thought I only okay. had one horse shit thing? No, I have two horse shit things, and it's actually in the finale. So here we do a lot of horse shit things around here. Am I this right? has been a very shit heavy episode, and I've been a yes. really big fan. I bet. Yeah. Hey, man, listen, if you're listening to this podcast and you're what fifty six, oh fuck me, this is the one year anniversary. Oh shit! This yeah. is the one year we were bullshitting too That's much, and is. we didn't. This is the one. Year. If you've been listening to this podcast for a year, and you're like, "I wish they'd stop talking about poop," you probably didn't make it through three episodes. And by the way, we thank you for being here a year. That's pretty great, Trey. Uh, I do have to finish this, mm-hmm. but I do think that's wonderful. And maybe we happy should talk anniversary, a little. happy heads. anniversary, thank buddy. You, Cheers Joe. to you. You know what? Cheers. Here, take a drink. Cheers. Oh, that's delightful. What are you drinking? Walter. Okay. So yeah. the second defenestration <laughs> was in 1483. And this particular... De- 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 oh, dip, 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 Jesus dip. Christ. This particular defenestration, uh, I, I, I couldn't find... There wasn't as much information. It seems like this one was sort of a blip in the defenestration world uh so this is gonna be really short and sweet so king vladalysis i'm certain i'm saying that wrong king vladalysis the second of hungary was the king of bohemia at that time but then he also became the king of morovia and hungary and all these people from the party of the communion under both kinds clunky name if you ask me which means by the way that they accept two different versions of of the Lord's Supper, I think. I I read two things about it, and all I can grasp is that that when they their their whole party is based on, I think it's okay if you take eat the crackers before the wine. I think it's okay if you drink the wine before the crackers. And that was that was it. That was their that's his that's his back then the way shit worked back then, probably six hundred people lost their lives over the course of that debate. Uh, (laughs) you know what I mean? (laughs) Crackers first. Wine first. Fucking yeah, crusade happens, and that's yeah. what. Yeah, and if you were a, a party of the communion under both kinds, you were as you were as much tolerant as it got back then. <laughs> like just saying, yeah, that, like, they were the they, they were the, the they're like, I'm with you, fellers yeah, of the exactly. uh, of the exactly. religious sects at the time. Exactly. Well, they were afraid of the new power that this dude had because now he's the king of like three different places. Uh, so they t- they also stormed the capital, chased seven councilmen up to the top and in front of the Burgermeister, which is one of my favorite fucking titles that you can yeah. have. 
Uh, I failed also to, I've always wanted to know what a Burgermeister was. And even when writing my notes here, I didn't think, Hey, go figure out what it is. It's hilarious. Right. You say uh, like, Oh, hits. I love you know that. what? Yeah, but I think it's because I, I don't want to know. I have no know. interest in knowing what it is, I but think it's it, it does hit for me. I think it's absolutely because, love that word and its existence. Like, did you look at what it means? No. Why would I do that? Because I, I think. I know what hits for me. I don't need to know what it means. Can you guess why I don't want to know what it means? Because it won't hit as much as you want it to. It's got nothing yes. to do with cheeseburgers. Burger, and, right. It yeah, has nothing right. to do with being the king of burgers. And right. that's what, when I hear someone, he's the burgermeister, I'm like, oh, me too. I bet that was Did you know that McDonald's has a vice president of cheeseburgers? Did you know that? Get the fuck out of here. That's all he do? Yeah, he's the cheeseburger man. But uh, that also means presumably man, they got mean, like a vice president. Are you talking about president. Mayor McCheese? No, no, I'm I'm talking about corporate McDonald's. <laughs> they have, you know, how companies have VP marketing, VP yeah. sales. They've got VP cheeseburgers, dude. I or at least they thought... used to. I remember because I remember when I was first starting stand up, I was writing packets and stuff for that NBC shit or whatever, and I would look at Yahoo Stupid News and jobs, all day, yeah. and I found a I found an article once about some controversy going on with McDonald's, and they had a statement from McDonald's senior VP of cheeseburgers, which <laughs> I just, I never forgot that. Cause that well, dude, I me. never thought that I could ever be in the corporate world, but like, I right. feel like if I knew that I was up for that, I could get pretty fucking succession real quick. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Like, I, yeah. I don't know, man. Like, I mean, think about it. Look at me. Don't you want me to be the VP of your cheeseburgers? Absolutely. I you do. would, I right? I want you to be the president of my cheeseburgers. Yeah, that's a great point. I can't settle. Uh, so anyways, they storm the capital, chase seven councilmen up to the top, and in front of the Burgermeister, they chunk them out the window. The key difference here is that they killed them first, and the throwing out was merely symbolic. It was symbolic because once when the first defenestration happened, they were like, okay, this is how you incite change. You know what I mean? It's the throwing out of the windows. It's a symbolic thing. So um, they they do this in front of the Burgermeister, and Burgermeister is like, oh, no, who's going to hear me thoughts on burgers? You know, or whatever. <laughs> and then while he was, like, leaning over looking at him, they fucking they threw the Burgermeister out the window. He was still alive when they did it, uh, from what I think I've read. It's like he they, they probably just, like, Burgermeister's here, and one of these – Fucking defenestrators probably kneels in front of him, and then somebody pushes him out the fucking window, like kids used to do on the uh, playground. That's what I think. So that's all about that one. Uh, the third defenestration, sixteen eighteen. So we are how many years? Uh, we're you know we're two hundred some odd years past the second defenestration. So believe it or not, there was more uproar against the Catholic Church. Trey, are you shocked? Mm -mm. No, there won't be more uproar. I agree. I agree. Frankly, thing. it's insane that it took them 200 years. So, but you know what that means? It's about time someone gets threw out a window again. Yeah. So there is a. But so far, aren't they the people that have been thrown out the windows? Aren't they the ones that are not? Are are they the Catholic? Like they're like the powers that be, aren't they? Like a mob, an unruly yeah. mob storms the Capitol and throws people in the Capitol out of windows, right? Yes, they're the unruly so it's mob. It's not the rebels that are being thrown out the windows. No, 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 no the, man. It's very okay. successful. It's basically it's Protestants um, not wanting to be ruled by Catholic, and all the leaders are Catholic because you had to be back and then. And they throw all the Catholics out the window. And they throw all the Catholics out the window. So yeah, dude, I'm mm -hmm. fucking on board. You know. Uh, yeah. Now, granted, I don't like protestants eh? like mm -hmm. i'm not i don't like i don't like none of it but the like I, like i don't believe in the protestant ideology at all but i do like if we're looking at this as just there's these people who are deciding what we have to believe and i'm i think that's wrong then i'm firmly in in the camp of the protestants you know what i mean okay, but, it but is, I, like, are they literally are they call i know that they're like they're dissenting against the uh uh, the Catholic Church or whatever, but like, were the when you're reading all this stuff, they actually call them Protestants. I don't know that they did okay. or not. I mean, I thought because Protestants, that's what Martin Luther did, right? Like that started with Martin Luther. Of course, you're now 200 years later. Yes, but that first guy, that first guy was 100 years before Martin Luther. And like, again, I didn't even know that there were people talking shit about the Catholic Church before Martin Luther. Uh, uh, right. I thought that was his like whole thing. Well, I mean, it, he it's like he made it 
big. You know what I mean? He was it's, like successful. It's kind of like us in Long our careers. Term. It's kind of like us in our careers. We were the first people to espouse uh, progressive ideology with our accents. Uh, mm-hmm. But but in 50 years, there's going to be someone do it and hit harder than or us. Less. And that will be, or less. Five yeah. or ten. I've been waiting on that motherfucker to show up since day one. It, well, like, and for, it won't be and, too long. And for the record, I have to acknowledge the existence of Stuart Huff here. But you know what I'm yes. saying? Like, th- there's, we're, there's always people who start the spark for someone and then later it gains traction. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, um, it says prior to Martin Luther and the other <laughs> Protestant reformers, there were earlier reform movements within Western Christianity. Uh, so well, it wasn't people, called Protestant though. I, Protestant might have just no, been the name we now gave it. So we look back what, and go, that, those were Protestants. That's what it is. The, yeah. the, the, these movements like this apparently are referred to now as proto Protestantism. Proto Protestant. Or, or yeah. pre Protestantism. I uh, actually get into that they a little bit. Protestants yet. I didn't know proto Protestant meant pre Protestant. That's, uh, mm-hmm. that's on me. I would thought it was like proto Protestant to me was like when you tell somebody, I was like, this guy's the prototype of you know, fucking football or whatever. I thought proto-Protestant was like, these the are the ultimate fucking, Protestant. the ultimate, was that dumb of me? Well, people do use prototype in that way, but also a prototype is the first unit of a thing that's, okay. that's made. Like okay. The prototype yep. of a new type of motorcycle or whatever. It's like, that's, that's the fair. first one. That's and, fair. Yeah. But but then but then what the fuck were they called? Like, we're calling them proto-Protestant. They so, well, that's, why, I'm saying, that's why I was asking, that's why I asked the question because, yeah, uh, I mean, no, they weren't called that at the time it was happening. Yeah. They were probably called, I don't know, Hussites or whatever. Yeah, Hussites or just... On this page of Proto-Protestantism, well, there's they Jan, were called, Hus, Jan Hus is listed on here. Um, not by them. them so. Really, we're trying to figure out what they were called by themselves. What they were called by the Catholics was heretics. Like, it, that's right. always been the same. They've never even... They probably didn't even call them Protestants when Protestants was a made-up word. They probably were just like these fucking heretics, because that's what it's all about. It's heresy. Uh, yeah. So... Again, here in 1618, there is a huge Protestant Reformation. Uh, and like, because Protestant was getting real big around this time, the separation. So, Ferdinand II, who was a Habsburg, and I believe we've talked about the Habsburgs uh, mm-hmm. in a previous episode. All you need to know is that uh, they were they were the most inbred of all yes. the people. Of all, like, everybody was inbred, but somehow they were just like the Tom Brady of fucking their cousins. And yes. uh, that's where the Habsburg jaw comes jaw, from. Their faces right. don't look right. They look like fucking poodles. I was going to put something else in front of it, but I mm-hmm. didn't. And so uh, he and he was a Catholic and he was the king and the emperor. And he starts talking shit, slinging his dick around, talking about how all the Protestant churches were going to be destroyed. He's like, dude, fuck this. You know what? Y'all trying to defenestrate and shit. I'm just going to burn your goddamn churches down. And that's going to be that. So, on May 23rd, 1618, the Bohemian Protestants stormed the Capitol once again, seized all the representatives, and held a mock trial, and they found three men guilty, which I find funny, because there was way more than three men there. They're the ones holding the trial, and they didn't, like, you'd think that they would just be like, you're all guilty, fuck you. But they mm-hmm. really they really did it right. They found three men guilty. Aside from the men that they found gu- guilty, there were these other three dudes, two imperial agents, Wilhelm Slavata and Vaclav Barita, and their secretary, Philippe Fabricius, uh, and they they weren't found guilty or sent to jail. So they were just like, hell yeah, skid it, Bo. Like, we good. You know what I mean? Okay, guilty and, of what? Hey, uh, like, g- guilty of... Uh, being Catholic and not hidden? Be, yeah, being Catholic and not hidden. Well, then right. how the hell did these guys get off on that? I figured they had them dead to rights on being that's Catholic what I'm, and not hidden. Like, that's what I'm saying. It's like yeah. all of them was doing the same thing, but like I guess they took the top three most not hidden ones and were like, well, we, you know, we don't have the fucking bandwidth to prosecute 12 people but we can do three you know what i mean so the so they were just like oh cool we good we good no problem and then bohemians were just like oh yeah y'all don't worry don't worry y'all ain't guilty matter of fact why don't y'all uh here's what i'm thinking why don't we go up to the top floor to celebrate the fact that y'all aren't guilty so they did and then guess what happens next top floor huh they got yep. windows up there Yep, sure do. Mm-hmm. 
I'm guessing uh, some defenestration started going down. Yep. They got I don't them. think if I lived in Prague and I was a Catholic and didn't hit and everything, and I had <laughs> been caught by this mob and all that, uh, I mean, I guess they didn't really have a choice, but I would try to avoid the top floor at all costs. I would too. I'd be, I'd be like, well, I'm, my I'm ankle, doing. you know, I man. Know, I don't know how y'all be with Wenders. No, thank you. Yeah, I get out of breath when I climb too many stairs. So yeah, if it's all the same to you, I my just, knees, you know, I'm down in my back. They, so they ain't I think that. I'm when just I, gonna stay down here on the on the ground floor. I mean, it's getting so bad. I hit you I, with a stick and drag you upstairs, throw you out the window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course. Uh, so they 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 threw them out the window. But Trey, plot twist: all three of them lived. All three of them lived from the same fall that has killed all these other people. Like nobody lived back then, but these dudes, they fucking they lived, right? So, wonder if the dude who it, threw him out the window caught shit for that. You know what I mean? He's like. How do you fuck that up, Johan? Right? There's a window. There's a guy. Throw him out the window. He died. You know. <laughs> That's all you got to do. He's like, I did do that. It's like, well, clearly did you it. didn't do it right. Well, he's crawling around down there. And you'd think it'd be a pretty simple job. And so because of this, there was like a lot of theories on like how this happened. So Ferdinand, the Habsburg motherfucker, of course, he was starting to tell everybody. He was like, oh, it was divine intervention. Yeah, and, right. And I knew he that had, was coming. Of course. And he had paintings and sculptures commissioned that depicted angels underneath them as they were falling so it's like basically dude we've got the basis for a brand new shadrach meshach and a billy goat story if you want to think about it it's three dudes something bad was supposed to happen to them and it didn't and now this they become like um they become not they're not martyrs they're almost martyrs you know what i mean like they're mm -hmm. because the martyr means you died but like they did get thrown out the window um uh, now a lot of the protestants respond to this by being like no -uh, it was the devil saved them the Naturally. devil saved them right 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 what actually happened and i told you we were <laughs> gonna come neither of those things was neither of those things <laughs> yeah, and i believe it was neither god nor the devil and uh, I, t I told you we'd get back to this. What happened oh. was they all three fell on a pile of horse shit that broke their fall. It was a, stay with me here, a poo d'etat. Ah, uh -huh. ah, yes. Uh. So that means that the local poop shoveler. <laughs> yes. That's where he was keeping all his poop for that day. Yes. Because right? it and couldn't have just come from one horse. Like that had to be shoveled into a poop pile. And like he didn't think to not put it under the official defenestration window of this uh, facility, and also the defenestrator didn't think to look for a poop pile, obviously, yep. and that's where he went wrong. I was joking earlier about how how do you fuck that up? Well, you don't watch out for poop piles and throw them right into it. That's how you fuck that up. Evidently, you are, that's you a are, big pile of poop. You are so correct. And this, of course, uh, there was an homage paid to this in the '80s blockbuster. Uh, back to the Future, when Biff it gets thrown out of a car uh, and lands in a, a barrel of horse manure or a uh, crate of horse manure. We've all seen it. That mm -hmm. was not in my notes at all. I just now thought of that. Um, so, last but not least, well, yeah, no, it's least, but, <laughs> but that's just how it goes. I wanted to go in chronological. I debated on whether I should put these in different orders so I could have the poop one be the climax, but then I was like, that's just confusing. What the fuck ever. The fourth defenestration, uh, the last one occurred just shy of the 300th anniversary of the Poop de Tat. Uh, on February 24th, 1948, Czechoslovakia fell to a communist coup d'etat, and thus Jan Marsowick, the foreign minister of Czechoslovakia, was chunked out of, you guessed it, a window. And it was ruled a suicide. And uh, I got to tell you, Trey, uh, in closing, I think that Prague is due another defenestration. Yeah, what sad. year did you say that last one was? That last one was in 1948, and there were some implications. Oh, 1948. Okay. 19, right. Yeah, 1948, and there were some implications of this that led to some wars and shit over there. Um, just like the the second defenestration led to the third the thirty year years war, I didn't bring that up because the thirty year wars the thirty years war on its own is going to be a great episode, and I didn't want to bury it. 
Um, but this one also, you know, sort of led to some skirmish and stuff while also the, I'm pretty sure the world war two was still going on. Um, uh, and, uh, yeah. So again, I think like, you know, if you look at it, it went, it was like the first two were like 50 years apart. Then the second to the third was 300 years apart and, or no, excuse me, the third to the fourth was 300 years apart. So I'm thinking like maybe split the difference and we are, let's see, we're 80 something years from the last defenestration. So like, I mean, fucking any day now, if you're in Prague, you might get third out of winter. Yep. All right. Well, that hits. Does hit. That hit. It was fun. Happy anniversary, everybody. Happy anniversary, Thank man. Thank you, Airheads, for and being I, here with us for the past we, year. It's been a lot of fun. Well, uh, we, we need to do sure some air mail. grow into the yeah. future. Oh, we do. Okay. All right. Well, I, no, but to, keep I, saying I didn't tell stuff. you this earlier. Well, I have to... Uh, I got... Katie just texted me and said she's not going to be home, so I have to let the boys in from school. They should okay, no be problem. Like I'll do some air. Minutes, I'll do some can... airmail uh, by myself if don't need me out there. We forgot last week, by the way, and it oh, was okay. and it was a, a highly debated topic on the internet uh, that we skipped. Now, granted, uh, I also haven't uh, vetted any of these, so I'm just going to read them. But I think, in honor of it being our year anniversary, we definitely owe it to hear. Uh, from our fans. So this first one here, uh, armadillos as a unit of measurement. Apparently this asteroid is the length of 33 nine banded armadillos. No news on how many armadillos worth of overall volume or mass. Also, I've been noted noticing more of them up in Tennessee too. never use them as a kid. I'm Hey, listen, I want to use this as jumping off platform to you tell, to tell everybody the shirt that you saw at your show. Oh yeah, uh, yeah. Let me pull it up real quick, so because I can't remember do. all it off the top of my head. But lovely, send it, young, send it to Dad too, so he can put it up. Lovely young lady came to my show in Frederick, Maryland, wearing a shirt that she had made herself because our lazy piece of shit asses won't make no goddamn merch, and we know people want it. We got to figure that out at some point. But her shirt says "Animal Math: Twenty Five Beetles equals One Squirrel, Fifteen Dogs equals One Horse." Big dogs are big. <laughs> Seven squirrels equals one dog. 175 beetles equals one dog. Look that up. 2,625 <laughs> beetles equals one horse. Checks out. <laughs> <laughs> That's fucking beautiful. We love y'all so much for real. Like I, we, me and Trey have said this about every project that we do because it always comes true is that like we have the best fucking fans in the world. Uh, you call us on your, our shit, which is great. I mean, I don't read those on air, but like you're awesome for doing it. Uh, and it's wonderful. Trey, we got time for one more before you get out of here. Yeah. Okay. Subject line. I once went on a trophy tree shopping spree. Hey, guys, congrats to Corey on the baby. He did the smart thing like I did by losing his hair before children just to get it out of the way before the stress hits. Thank you, asshole. (laughs) Uh, I'm writing to confirm that trophy trees are absolutely a thing. A friend of mine used to do landscape engineering for Augusta National Golf Club. Motherfucker, holler at me. Uh, When that big ice storm tried to murder Atlanta years back, the course lost a handful of 75-plus-year-old loblolly pine trees the club wanted to keep up appearances and the difficulty of the course so they charged my buddy with scouring the south carolina slash georgia coastal empire for mature replacements that could be uprooted and sent to augusta i don't know shit about what makes one big pine tree better than the other but he let me and another guy ride along on a few weekend trips where his travel and dinner and booze and other incidentals were fully covered by that club i was present for him identifying trees suitable Uh, identifying three suitable trees and noticed that there was no discussion of price. I asked if it had been listed somewhere and he laughed. When he got tasked with a job, he was just supposed to get them what they wanted. He had an address for any bills that needed to be sent and was never given a budget for any work that he ever did. I could also tell you some fancy people stories about how insane the Sunday night party is at the night after the Masters, but the club might send people to kill me. Keep up the good work and the good times. Uh, buddy, please private message me with those stories. I won't publish mm-hmm. them, but me and Trey, I'm, as y'all know, a huge golf fan. The Masters is coming up next week, and I'm really pumped about it. But Trey, buddy, I love you. I want you to go see your kids, but also to tell you, it's been a fucking pleasure being here for a year, it's the funnest thing I have ever done. And uh, tell your friends so that they can mm-hmm. enjoy it. Please. Also, 
TreyCrowder.com for tickets to see Trey and the Well Red Boys. Patreon.com slash Trey Crowder for bonus Trey. And for bonus me, PartTimeFunnyMan.com. Love you so much. Stay fancy, motherfuckers. Skew wait. Say you bye. Skew. Here's Lydia Loveless. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Royalty and rednecks are alike. They both like cutting and picking fights. Biscuits and baked beans where they don't belong. Sit on down with Corey and Trey and learn some fancy shit. Today we'll laugh and let it leave and when they're wrong. They'll take you to a magical place where if you call someone a cut, nobody cares. They keep it debonair at putting on airs, putting on airs, putting on airs.